Okay, so we've talked a little bit then about chronic fatigue syndrome and what that means. Mm. What I think now would be helpful then is to go back to the diary and go through your activities and talk about how you could manage those to maybe start feeling a little bit better, and get your symptoms a bit more under control. Is that all right? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So as we discussed, um, you know, I was quite surprised by by the activities that, that you know that you were doing that were making you so tired because obviously mm. when you come and see me it's on a good day mm. um, but I've really got a sense now of, of the bad days that you're having when you're really having to rest for significant portions um, and particularly what I'm getting a sense of is that often you're having a good day and then that's followed by quite a bad day yeah. So, you know, on a day like this, you went to work and then you also tried to do a couple of things in the evening, like having dinner with your girlfriend, watching the telly. And those might be things that you don't think should be making you tired. Watching TV, for example, you might think that's fairly restful activity, but, mm. but you're having to concentrate and, you know, there's flashing um, images on screen and things. And, mm. and that can that can be quite exhausting in itself um, but on a day when you do a, a lot of things then the next day you're having these quite big periods of rest or even sleep during the day and what would be better and what I think would make you feel a bit better is if we can um, start to manage your activities um, with an approach called graded activity which is where we get you to a baseline um, and then slowly get you to build up from there right. okay mm -hmm. So if I can just explain that in, in a bit more detail. Um, I mean, on a day like this, which is a bad day for you and, and you've had to, to go to sleep in the afternoon, what we try and do is manage your rest periods so that you're not sleeping during the day because actually that can affect your sleep at night then and it can make you more restless overnight, which right. is something, again, that you've been finding. If we split your activities, broke them down a little bit, made them maybe a little bit shorter. So, for example, here, you know, you've been gardening for two hours. That might be too much. I can understand why you'd need to rest mm. for a good hour or more after that. Perhaps if you only did that for 30 minutes or an hour at most and then had a briefer rest. And rest can, can be lots of different things. As I say, watching television is, is probably not a great rest. It can be a bit too stimulating. Um, but there's lots of sort of relaxation techniques that, that we can talk about and I can give you some information on that you can use um, during a rest period. Mm. Okay. And, okay. And again, we should try and keep those brief and then go back to doing some form of activity. Now gardening is quite physical but you could go back and do a, a more mental activity like for example here you've, you've talked about um, reading some books for work. Again you could do that but, but possibly not for such a large chunk of time mm. because again as you've said when you do something like that for a large chunk of time that then affects your concentration and you're finding that you know you really can't retain things. So does that seem like a reasonable approach? Uh, yeah, I, I I guess I'm wondering how how do I achieve a baseline? Yeah, I mean it, it's a difficult concept. I think um, essentially, like I've talked about, you're having sort of good days where you're doing a lot, and then bad days when you're really having to rest for the majority of the day. Mm. So we know that your baseline activity is somewhere between those two. Right. We're not going to know exactly until you start this approach. But essentially, what we should get to is a standard day that you could then continue for the rest of the week without having to have a day off where you where you spend you know an increased amount of time either in bed or resting so whatever your baseline is you should be able to maintain that without any increase in your fatigue right so i guess what i'm thinking then is that that means that i'm going to be to start with doing even less than i'm doing now well to some respects, you'll be doing maybe less than you're doing on a day when, you, when you're potentially pushing yourself a bit too much. But also, what I'm talking about is varying the types of activity that you do. So by the end of the day, you might have achieved almost as much, but you'll have done it in shorter periods and you'll have changed between maybe more physical things um, and, and, and more mental things. Does, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it does, yeah, I guess I'm just worried about work, I think, and sort of pulling my weight around the house and stuff as well. Yeah, and, and what I'd be keen to do is that once we've got this baseline and you're feeling a bit better in yourself, 
the aim then would be to build up and would be to increase the amount that you can mm. do. So certainly this is a path towards increasing what you can do, not saying stop and do nothing. Mm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense.